This video is a comment on uh, Akrile Sava's uh, recent video on uh, remote weather control and uh, mind control goo, together with uh, Rich West. Uh, the reading in the first time of Darius, the reading of his Akashic records, stirred my own prescient reminiscences, and this, of course, goes for the second lifetime also. I, uh, the, the high tech dreams of future worlds and uh, realities with an all factor equal to, and also on occasions surpassing the sci fi elements of this reading. And because I have had the opportunity of reflecting on my uh, dream vistas accrued ostensibly over the past 16 years, I find relevant ontological aspects coming to bear on what's being brought forth in the Darius scenarios detailed in this video. My first reaction is that there's a depth of cosmological and ontological reflection missing here. Because we are here confronted with both a harmonious and spiritually highly advanced and materially integrated civilization, as well as a discordant encounter between it and a spiritually retarded service to self society that attempts to encroach on it in order to usurp their psi powers, probably for imperial aspirations, although this is not expressed overtly. Um, talking now about his the Darius first lifetime. Uh, onto his other lifetime, Darius' ability to control the trajectory of a bullet in his spaceship lifetime, reminds me of one prescient dream of mine in which I was a skier. And I can't explain the name except that it came to me with the dream. The skier is spelled S K Y R. A skier who was a warrior of similar abilities, except that the skiers, at least as far as my impression went, were 100% psi slash physical and 0% technology, and they were assigned to worlds where there were special individuals that had been selected for future grandeur, but in their present environment were vulnerable and needed special protection. A skier, therefore, is a special operations steward who has gained a level of spiritual advancement and psi powers that he, I wouldn't know if there are any she's, I didn't meet any others, I only knew I was a member of the ski collective, would use to achieve his mission's objective. Concretely, a ski can navigate and thus appear to control subtle energy flows, mental, causal, even up to buddhic, I suspect, and with amplitudes transcending the life cohesion threshold. In other words, the skier can perceive a lethal energy pattern approaching or emerging, not necessarily an object or a coherent entity or even phenomenon, but an emerging reality field with energy amplitudes peaking beyond the levels commensurate with life for a regular human, and consequently handle that matrix in any of several ways to ensure the survival and prevention of harm to the would-be client. This would include the ability to steer a bullet. So this to me seems to be reality powers on a scale certainly comparable to but potentially eclipsing those conferred on Darius through technical augmentation via his so-called action suit. 
and surely similarly advanced material technology for other purposes. The example where Darius was distracted by social conflict and therefore lost his situational awareness significantly with respect to the hostile GUI entity would and could not have afflicted Askir since they master their emotional and social realities with the same level of perfection as they do their mental and physical and we're now talking about messed mass energy space time conditions the reason for this again being their holotropic training with applied sex economy I might add that a skier would never act based on uh, tactical considerations as towards an enemy such as where Darius dissimulates being already under the influence of the goo in order to avoid being targeted and thus securing for himself a room to maneuver. Instead, the skier would either take command of the situation, any situation, or find his mission moving elsewhere, exiting the manifest conflict altogether. Askir never doubts himself, not because of high self-confidence, but because he sees himself as a diminutive expression of the highest Godhead with whom he is integrated and subsequently acting in complete faith and with the absolute certainty that comes from it. His every action can be seen as simply the expression of that will of the highest Godhead, which by definition encompasses the true will or thelema of any other party, which is in reality ultimately a composite part of it, singular or collective. All of this, <clears throat> I mean, in both mine and the Darius Vistas, impinge on trends that are manifest and also that are, have yet to uh, break through the event horizon that we see on Earth at the present time. The spaceship Darius uh, world, or in any case, some world significantly, com significantly comparable to it, clearly is on a projected future timeline with a contiguity with at least part of the military industrial complex, including the so-called breakaway civilization or the Nazi Antarctic civilization, but guided by ethical ideology, possibly even as far as complying with Kant's categorical principle. Mine is not, at least not directly, contiguous with such a technology-dependent reality. The reality of Skir instead suggests a reality where humanity is much more deeply harmonized and integrated with the ultimate Godhead, with exhaustive metaphysics which dictates a focus on perfection rather than mere precision. In other words, Askir appearing in the Darius spaceship reality would command imminent obedience, or rather, because I don't see among the skiers' objectives taking leadership, deference to their spiritual inclination, and consequently a reframing and refocus of that entire civilizational paradigm. Or arriving at a consensual arrangement which would affect the withdrawal of the skier. It is extremely telling when Rich sums up the ontological dimensions which Aquila has been perceiving in Darius as, quote, mental body, spiritual body, and physical body, and then goes on to conclude all of it. And Aquila exceeding this representation. 
because those definitely aren't all of it. What is critically missing here are the emotions and inextricably intermeshed with those, the social dimension of our individual reality. Although it is hardly ever labeled as such, we might, with no loss of accuracy, talk about the individual's social body. This meaning the individual's social environment, people and all other sentient beings in it, not as an enclosed unit, but as extensions of this one individual human being. Now, finally, with respect to Richard's concluding observation that our present time here on Earth sees gifted people, especially people endowed with advanced and robust spiritual abilities and strengths, being targeted by often nefarious, perhaps sometimes, at least in their own perception, which notably may or may not concur with objective reality, benevolent groups who wish to make use of these individuals in any of a number of ways, from usurping their energy or powers, to recruiting them to their agenda, to manipulating and controlling them, or to diffusing a perceived potential or manifest threat to their position. I'd like to inject here that Aquila Sava must be one such targeted human being par excellence. So let's have a disclosure from Aquila about her situation in this respect. What choices have she been forced to make? What does she see as oncoming or potential challenges for her? What are her strategies for spiritual hygiene. For my own part, I have been heavily targeted, not so much in the physical, real world, but brutally and savagely in the astral realm, which is my dream life. In fact, I believe the fact that I have been so little assaulted in real life with minimal physical trauma, such as violent physical attacks, there have been a few, can be singularly attributed to the fact that I, early on in my spiritual training, training ground, aligned with the highest Godhead, and subsequently, but also prior to that, I have been subtly, but to me conspicuously and ser serendipitously guided into both major life decisions and to accepting certain principles for my living, both large and radical, as well as minute and precise, all leading to protect me from being detrimentally targeted. So when I am targeted or find myself thrust into a rough space, it is never beyond my means to deal effectively and constructively with the imminent challenge. Sustainability is the key word in this training ground um, based on the before mentioned uh, applied sex economy methodology. I recorded and uploaded two videos a few weeks ago where I commented on Aquila Sava's client business. After watching this new video from Aquila, together with Rich West, I feel a strong imperative to call the attention of the two practitioners to the severity of their operation and make known my assessment that they are insufficiently prepared to enter the ontological space which they seem quite unconcerned about venturing into. So much of the ufology and exopolitical realm appears blithely unconcerned with any encroachment they may effect on the uncoiling and recoiling of creation. And surely there must be a great leeway for playful exploration of other dimensions and life forms and civilizations that are out there in a universe 
where the Creator God seems ostensibly not imminent. Surely, as long as we're acting with a good intent, wishing no harm on anybody, being clear in our intent to improve our already well-intentioned selves, even, seeing clearly who's on the side of good and who are the ill-intentioned, the perpetrators of evil, the egotistical service to self cohorts, then how can we possibly be on the wrong side of history, as the phrase goes, on the wrong side of God, or source, or ultimate reality? Well, in one sense, we cannot. We're all here for the learning experience. One lesson in beingness after another, in knowingness, in havingness, and so on. And again, any signs of a God actually being physically and tangibly present in this reality are clearly missing. Except there's a sucker punch being wound up just beyond your perception horizon. And if you remain carefree and oblivious, rather than heeding the heads ups you are receiving, rather than riding the cosmic tidal wave as it hits shore, taking full advantage of both its energetic and propulsive power to propel you right into the thick of all the action you had prepared for and been prepared for, the sucker punch might hit you and hurt you. And not because you were evil and God wanted to punish you either, but simply because you didn't hearken when the calls to prepare and give way came through. Add together the 2012 phenomenon, which may have been intentionally misdated, and the emergence of the photon belt, again misdated, announced by Sheldon Nidal in 1997, Add Paul Laviolette's galactic superwave and the Theosophical Society's belief in the year 2025 as being the year of the great changeover. But add particularly, carefully, Barbara Handclaw and Amora Kwan Yin's narrative explaining that the change that ha is happening now on Earth isn't merely earth joining the greater galactic or cosmic family it is a watershed moment in creation it is an event which is seen as a cosmic event across our cosmos and earth and humanity on earth is at its focal point in a different way this is all explained in a couple of texts I wrote a little over five years ago, one called Cosmology and Cosmogony, and the other one titled Holotropic Homosexuality. During the period since I published them, they have received no attention. I have done very little to call anyone's attention to them. Perhaps now is the time to take a look at them. As I said, I have received no feedback on them. So they may be a bit rough and some of the ideas might require a challenge in order to revise or hone the thought form that bore the idea. I'll sum up. As all aspects of our spiritual and experiential vanguards move forward at an ever increasing pace and at an ever more acute angle, Considerations that one didn't have to make in the past now move into prominence and very soon criticality. The work that the two of you, Aquila and Rich, are doing is at the spearhead of one particular aspect of the vanguard which tangentially, if not forcefully, impinges on some key areas of great concern to the powers that be soon to become the powers that were. From what I see, you are operating from an insufficiently comprehensive 
Weltanschauung to be able to deal with the effects that you are going to make if you move along on your current trajectory. Your work with Darius, who is a power player, shows this. At least it shows that to me. If you wish to have a conversation with me, either or both of you, we can have that in the manner most suitable to our situation. I have already given Aquila some special permission in that regard. As for Darius, maybe I'll meet him in the school one day.